So here we have our top supply train back. Uh, here's our upper track. And as balls pour into it, what they will do is they will push down on a plastic uh, plate in here. It's attached with a wire and that wire comes over and it goes all the way down to the front and that's the one that uh, actually shuts off that uh, uh, bar that you can see through the window on the front uh, to shut the flow of balls off. So when it's up like this, that's when the bar blocks balls from entering the shooter assembly. Also what this does is it activates this switch here uh, to turn on and off the light. Uh, it actually turns it on when you don't have balls. Uh, when it's down like this, it turns it on. So uh, the uh, activating arm of the switch needs to be below this wire um, the way this one is currently hooked up. Now as balls go down the track, uh, they'll hit this swing here. The swing needs to be down. And what it does is it, it, it uh, steps down the level of balls so that when it enters the turn, they're only one high. Now, as it enters the turn on most machines, uh, there is uh, usually like a red or a clear fork right here. It'll have two prongs because there are two tracks. And what it'll do is that fork will bend. You can, you can manually just pivot it and pivot it down, and it'll block the flow of balls from going into your track. Now, when we restored this machine, we took it out because you really don't need that for home use. It was designed, and pachinko parlors attendants could, could flip it down keep the balls all in the machine while they service the machine. Uh, for home use, I always encourage folks to uh, empty all the balls out of the machine uh, before they work on it. Uh, balls would go around this track, come over here, and enter into the jackpot assembly. We'll see more of that in a minute. There is, uh, on this lower track, there is a piece of plastic. Um, it's a lower track cover. Um, a lot of times they're missing. If yours is missing, you can uh, cut a piece of cardboard or plexiglass and tape it in there or somehow secure it. Uh, basically, you have to have something there, otherwise balls won't enter the jackpot assembly properly. Now, to uh, take that track out, there is a spring over here and then a metal latch. If we slide that latch to the left, it will release a lever right here and then we can pick up the track and pull it out. Slide it over, then I can pick it up and I can pull it out. Now to put it back in, it's just reverse, stick the back end, uh, and there's a small slot, you're going to feed it in, and then pull this out, drop it in place. Now we've got a couple levers here. These uh, two levers, right now they're in the open position, meaning balls will fall through and empty out of your machine, this is the ball drain lever. Uh, right here. So what you in normal play, you need to have those levers locked. So we're going to lock them by pushing that lever over to the left. Now those levers are locked. Now on some machines, you'll have a part right, right here, a little metal part with a wire, and that wire is going to come all the way across, either either on the front or on the back by the wood, and you could pivot that wire, which would do the same thing as moving this. Now, these two levers, when there are no balls um, in this track holding them down, they should fall down and they should rest right on this part. Um, it was pivoted over in the wrong position and I just straightened it so that those levers landed right on it. Uh, there's some kind of switch here. This is a new switch. We put all new switches on our machines. Um, and there's a, a, a metal wire here that activates that switch um, when this pivots up and down. Um, there's usually a cover right here as well, um, usually to keep uh, attendants from accidentally activating jackpots. Um, we actually remove those covers, uh, those security covers. They're not needed for home use and it allows you to have easier access to uh, get to these levers when you need to clear ball jams. So here we have the jackpot assembly. Usually there's some kind of cover over this area. It's kind of nice. It keeps dust and stuff from getting inside of there. But you can't operate the machine without the cover. A lot of times there will be a light bulb in the center of the uh, jackpot assembly depending on the type of attraction you have on the front. Some of them are solid so there's no light here because light can't go through. In this case ours uh, light could. Um, and these parts all pivot 
Got to move a couple parts out of the way. Okay. So, so normally balls are in your machine. Uh, they're in the assembly here and they're pushing against this rocker arm. Uh, and the weight of the balls is holding them like that. Now when I get a jackpot, that rocker arm pivots up, dropping the balls down that were in that arm. Uh, and then when it releases, more balls will load into the jackpot assembly. Now for this machine, we just wired it to run off of 9 volt battery. These machines are mechanical. You don't need electricity to run them. Uh, they operate off gravity alone. Um, but if you do want to have um, the lights flash or come on to let you know when the supply tray is out of balls, uh, you need to hook them up to a power source. Uh, 6 volt battery, those big square flashlight batteries, 9 volt battery, uh, anything will really do. We're, we're just talking about a couple lights so we don't need a lot of power. Um, in the Pachinko parlors, they were typically plugged into the wall. Um, so there was some kind of transformer um, and fuse to make sure that you didn't have an overload of current coming through the transformer, uh, blowing out the light bulbs. But you don't need a fuse if you're just running off a battery. Now when you get a jackpot, the balls will drop down. They'll hit a plate here. They're uh, redirected over this way. Then they come over here. And the weight of the balls will cause an arm here to pivot. And when that arm pivots, it does a couple of things. One, there's uh, parts over here, it'll reset the seesaw. Um, also, the balls will then roll this way, they roll over, and they hit this bell, and then they go out into your play tray. Now, if your play tray gets really full and starts to back up with balls, then eventually, this uh, little clear, uh, this white plastic part inside of here will pivot, and then anytime you get a jackpot, instead of the balls going that way, they'll be blocked and the balls will come down this way and they'll hit this bell and then they'll go out into your receiving tray in front. Now here's the, uh, the parts that start the jackpot. I was kind of showing you the back of the jackpot first. Uh, whenever you get a ball into one of the pockets, it'll roll down the track into your seesaw. That seesaw will pivot down and when it pivots, it will release that ball. That ball will roll across here back here and then it'll land on a shovel, a clear pl uh, a plastic shovel that's attached to a brass arm that goes all the way back behind here and that uh, weight of that ball will cause that arm to pivot all the way down here. So as that arm pivots down, it's got a pivot point here, it's going to push a rod up and that rod is what moves all the linkage uh, at the jackpot assembly causing the balls to fall out and, and then eventually this gets reset. Now when you pull on the flipper, it um, has a spring that uh, is used for tension to, to launch the ball in the play field and depending on how much tension is how far the spring will shoot. Well you can actually adjust it. There is a plate right under here that has some holes in it and, you can, and, it's, and it's got one nail and you can just pick it up off of that nail and pull it tighter or make it more loose, putting it in a different hole to adjust that tension. Okay, now I'm going to activate three jackpots so you can see all the levers and everything that happens here at the bottom of the machine and then we'll move up to the top and show you that. Okay, now I'm going to show you the most common problem with these machines, a ball jam, because the uh, one ball seesaw is in the wrong position. It's in the down position that's wrong. Uh, here's what it looks like. Okay, I dropped in four balls. So someone goes, oh man, the seesaw is in the wrong position. I better fix that. And so they start doing this. Well, that's a good thing. There were actually balls in the top, uh, so it actually all worked. Now I need to empty those balls so I can actually create the jam that'll happen. Okay, we'll try that again. OK, 
okay, all the balls came over here and they got stuck on this arm, so they're not pivoting down. And if you're paying attention, you go, oh, that pushes that rod all the way up the top. Maybe there's something I need to do there. Let's move up and take a look. Okay, um, this long rod. can't pivot all this linkage because those two arms are in the way. So A, you could add balls to the supply tray which would move those arms allowing it to pivot. Or B, you can just move them with your finger or a chopstick. And now that arm oh, uh, pivoted down. But when it pivoted down, it did not pay out. Instead, we've got the beginnings of a ball jam. So down here we can see that we've got four. Now you get a bunch of these that can really cause trouble um, but typically all you need to do with just a few is part of here there is a wire that if we lift up it will release the balls. Now if you have say a hundred balls backed up in your machine it may take a lot of times of doing those steps. You may even have to tap on your machine um, to get the balls to flow because if there's so many in there they'll be jammed really hard um, and they won't flow into the seesaw so um, you just have to take your time rock the machine back and forth to get all those balls out.